Dr. Levine, how did you actually come to develop your ideas about the felt sense, and how do you use that in therapy? Felt sense, this was a term coined by uh, another friend, um, Eugene Jenlin, who in the 1960s, I believe, in the early, mid-60s, wrote a book called Focusing. And he was studying what, is the, what variables account for successful therapy. And basically every variable he tested was negligible. Was it the type of therapy? Didn't, there was no consistent correlation. Was it the experience of the therapist? A little correlation. Was it the relation between the therapist and the client? A little bit of, but still nothing that would explain, really show uh, that's, uh, what, why some therapist uh, really um, uh, benefited from psychotherapy and which ones didn't. What he did discover, it was the ability of the client to reference their sensations and their feelings, their conflicts, their issues in their bodies and for them to change in their bodies. And at that time, you know, there was really no language to talk about inner sensations. I mean, some of the philosophers uh, had talked about it in, in different ways. But he really took this idea and made it a main piece of, uh, of, 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 uh, of therapeutic uh, vocabulary. And um, um, where all of us who work in, 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 in body-oriented therapy are, are, are beholden to him, are grateful to him for making that term. He himself is not a therapist and doesn't really do therapy, but he really got the importance of referencing in the body and discovered that as being the root of creativity and then did a lot of work on creativity and the inner felt sense. So, it's really basically about sensations, but not just sensations like tingling, vibration, warmth, but of what have been called uh, contours of feelings. So Darwin described the categorical emotions, the, the emotions that we have because we're at mammals. So fear, anger, uh, sorrow, joy, disgust, and curiosity, I think, were the six that he, that he, he described. When you meet somebody that you haven't seen for a while and you have this kind of warm feeling inside, that's a sensation, but it's also a feeling. It's a sensation-based feeling. So it's a feeling of gladness when you walk out in the morning and there's a, a dew on a blade of grass, drops of dew on a bla blade of grass, and you look at that. Or you see children playing in a, in, a, in a playground in a park and you're touched by that. Or you see a beautiful painting in a museum and you are moved by that. What lets us know that we're being moved are again our, our body sense. And it's these contours of feeling, of goodness, of, 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 of approach, of avoidance, of, of yeah, uh, so, that really direct the movement of our lives throughout the day. You could easily imagine going through a day without a categorical emotion, without feeling anger or fear or joy even, but also have a day that is very rich, imbued with the with a verdant landscape when you walk, uh, uh, touched when you see somebody that you care about or reflect on them. So, yeah, so again, these, the felt sense are based on physical sensations and encompass the whole inner landscape of our bodies. These are initial steps that help people to contain their feelings, emotions, sensations so that they can then be processed. It's not uh, just having a good feeling by itself. Um, you know, uh, it, it can be helpful. There's no question about it. I mean, uh, not for all traumatized people, but for some traumatized people, uh, some kinds of massage can be helpful. But again, you really need to also work specific ways in which the trauma gets locked in the body and how you, what I call, renegotiate it so that it can be transformed. 
And that doesn't just happen by having a good experience in your body. Okay. Although having a good experience in your body is a good thing.